Hey Central students, excited to uh, bring you the first of hopefully a few uh, midweek video lessons that we're going to be dropping Thursdays at 6 p.m. on all of our social media platforms. And so we just want to try to connect with you, try to disciple you, and, and still walk you through the Word together. And this is one of the ways that, that we feel right now is going to be the best. So every Thursday starting today, we're going to drop a video at 6 p.m. that is going to be our, our student midweek lesson. And I know the past two weeks have kind of been real crazy, and I, I really can't wait to meet in person again. Uh, but for right now, we just have to press on. And before the quarantine, we walked through a four-week series talking about transitions, and, and we talked about uh, trusting and obeying God through the transitions and trials that we face in life. And then we also talked about keeping our focus on Jesus through those transitions. And then we talked about finding a true friend to stand in the fire beside you, uh, to help, help you through the, the hard times in life and, and the new things that you, you aren't ready to experience or that may be causing anxiety or fear. And we, we discussed all these different scenarios and, and how we can give God glory through the transitions of our lives and, and, and starting and beginning new things. And so we're going to switch gears a little bit this week, uh, starting this week and for the next uh, three weeks after this, we're going to start a series titled After You. And the entire focus of this series is going to be living a selfless life and, and serving and loving others and those around us, those that we're with in our daily lives that we see at school or that we see at home, our friends, our family, even, even the random people at the supermarket that we may see or the people that, that live in our neighborhoods. And so we're going to focus on an after you lifestyle and we're going to focus on living our life in a selfless way. And, and the first way I think that we begin to live a selfless life is by noticing the needs of other people. And so if you see out on the screen, I'm going to have some notes and stuff. You can follow this along or you can refer back to this. But the series is titled After You. And the first way that we live an after you kind of life is by noticing others' needs. And so you see selfless living starts with noticing others' needs. When it comes to living a selfless life, it's about placing others' needs above your own. And we're going to break that down as we look through a passage in Mark. And so, something else I want you to write down if you're taking notes or, or just pay attention to. Living selflessly starts with viewing others' needs. And living selflessly starts with viewing others more important than you view yourself. Living selflessly starts with viewing others more important than how you view yourself yourself. And so, you know, we talk about noticing things and we talk about trying to pay attention to our surroundings. But I have a couple questions I want, I want to ask you before we really dive off deep into this. Have you ever failed to notice something obvious? Have you ever been in a room or been around a group of people and fail to notice something that's happening right in front of your face. As teenagers, you're experts at this, right? Your parents will come in the room and they'll tell you to do something. And they've told you like 27,000 times. And they'll come back and they're like, hey, why haven't you cleaned your room? It's like, I didn't know you told me to. And then your mom pulls out like this video recording of every time she's told you to do something. And it's right there, obvious in front of your face. And you just completely miss it. Well, how about those times where, where you're in a group of people and someone's hurting or someone needs something and you're so wrapped up in, in something, something else that you completely miss what's going on? And the second question I want to ask you is what is it that is causing you to miss the obvious? What is it in your life that is causing you to miss the obvious things that are happening right in front of you and the obvious needs of people that you can meet? So I want to challenge you. I want you to watch this video, listen to the instructions, pay attention, and do your best to do what it's asking you to do. This is an awareness test. How many passes does the team in white make? Go!
The answer is 13. But did you see the moonwalking bear? If you noticed in the video, the challenge was to count how many passes the white team made. And, and you focus so hard and you see and you're watching every single pass and you're counting every single one of them that you completely miss the fact that there is a bear walking through the middle of the video, moonwalking at that. And I think that's a pretty good illustration of how we get so wrapped up into specific things that we miss something you know, crazy that's happening right in front of us. And so as we continue through this and we start uh, this series and we look at noticing the needs of others, I want you to turn to Mark chapter 6. We're going to look at about 10 verses in Mark chapter 6, and we're going to start in verse 30. So if you have your Bible or you just want to follow along, I'll have it on the screen uh, for you to follow along as well. So starting in Mark chapter 6, verse 30, the apostles returned to Jesus and told him all that they had done and taught. And he said to them, come away by yourselves to a desolate place and rest a while. For many were coming and going and they had no leisure even to eat. And they went away in the boat to a desolate place by themselves. Now many of them, and now many saw them going and recognized them. And they ran there on foot from all the towns, and they got there ahead of them. When he went ashore, he saw a great crowd, and he had compassion on them, him being Jesus in this. Because they were like sheep without a shepherd, and he began to teach them many things. And when it grew late, his disciples came to him and said, This is a desolate place, and the hour is now late. Send them away to go into the surrounding countryside and villages and buy themselves something to eat. But he answered and said, You give them something to eat. And they said to him, Shall we go and buy two hundred denarii worth of bread and give it to them to eat? And he said to them, How many loaves do you have? Go and see. And when they had found out, they said, five and two fish. Then he commanded them all to sit down in the groups on the green grass. So they sat down in the groups by hundreds and by fifties. And what you see in this passage in Mark is that you see Jesus noticing others' needs. And so my first point in this, in this lesson is Jesus noticed others' needs. And we see that evident in two uh, very specific ways. But I want you to understand this too. Jesus never once lived a, a me first life. He always lived an after you life. He never once lived a life where it was all about him, all about me. I'm first. Nobody can be first. He always instead lived a life where he placed others before his own. And I think we see the proof in that and, and through how he reacted and, and to, to everybody coming to him and how he just stopped what he was doing at, at certain times to spend intentional time with, with even children or widows or, or, or different people who were sick. He had a lot going on. He was, had a lot to do and he was focused on what he was doing. But no matter what happened, he took the time to be intentional and to focus on others' needs instead of his own. And so Jesus never once lived a me first life. He lived an after you life. And so two ways I think in this passage that we see how Jesus noticed other needs. The first one is that Jesus noticed the needs of his disciples and he met their needs. Jesus noticed the needs of his disciples and he met their needs. We see that in verses 30 and 32. The disciples had just returned from a short mission trip. They were tired. And I can tell you, the mission trips I've been on in my life, even though I come back and I'm excited and I'm joyful and I just want to tell everybody about it, one thing that I really always enjoy is getting to lay down in my own bed and getting to rest because they're very exhausting. I went on a mission trip one time to Oklahoma, not Oklahoma, excuse me, Montana, 
And in Montana, we set up a tent at a Native American festival, and we gave out coffee and Bibles and bottled water. And I remember how much work that mission trip required. We were, we were exhausted. We were tired. We slept in teepees on cots so we didn't sleep that well. And I remember how excited I was to come back and tell my family and my loved ones and my friends and even my church about all that God had done through that, that trip. But I remember one thing I was really excited about, and that was getting to sleep. And I think after, after the plane rides and everything, I think I ended up sleeping for about 14 hours after we returned home. And what I want you to realize in this passage is that Jesus, Jesus sees that in His disciples. He sent them out on, on a journey, on a mission trip, if you will, and they're doing His work. They return back to Him, and He sees that they're hungry. He sees that they are exhausted, and He realized that they had a need for rest. And so what does Jesus do? He grants them a place and a way to meet that need. They're tired. They need rest. So Jesus tells them, go to a desolate place and find rest. Not only do we see that Jesus notices the needs of His disciples and He meets them, we also see that Jesus notices the needs of the crowd. And He also meets that need. Number two, Jesus noticed the needs of the crowd and he met their needs. Though he's passing by, while in the middle of meeting one need of his disciples, he notices that the crowd is with them, and then he, it says he has great compassion on them. So Jesus is meeting one need. He's taking care of those who are closest to him. And in that entire process, he then sees another need for the crowd which he's been teaching, and he stops what he's doing and he meets that need as well. And so I want to challenge you with this. Don't miss an opportunity to serve someone because you're only focused on one thing. We as Christians, especially you teenagers, you need to make yourself aware of your surroundings and what's happening around you. You can be serving and you can be doing great things and, and so wrapped up in one thing that you completely miss so many other opportunities to serve while you're serving. Don't live a life so focused on your own needs that you fail to notice the needs of the people who are sitting right in front of you. And so as we talk about an after you life and we talk about noticing people's needs, I think the best example for us to follow is Jesus and how he noticed needs. But he didn't just notice the needs, he met them. He lived an after you life. He noticed the needs of his disciples and he met them. While meeting that need, he noticed the, the needs of the crowd, and he met that need. He, he, it didn't matter what was going on in that time. He saw that his disciples were tired. He gave them rest. He saw that the crowd was hungry, and he didn't send them away to go fend for themselves. He didn't say, I don't have time to fool with that right now. He said, you know what? Then you feed them. We will feed them. And he makes it happen. Not only do we see how Jesus noticed others' needs, but when it comes to our lives, we see in Philippians that we're reminded of how we're supposed to live. And so point number two, Paul's reminder for us. Point number two is Paul's reminder for us. If you're taking notes, I want you to write this down. This is real important. Don't just think about yourself. Take interest in others. Don't just think about yourself, but take interest in others. It's so easy, especially in the, in the quarantine. And I think this is very fitting. You go to the supermarket and you can't buy toilet paper. Um, I hope you don't have that problem because that's, that's really bad. But the reality is, is that people are so worried about themselves that they're hoarding uh, things, they're, they're fighting over things. I watched a video just this past week of, of this uh, supermarket in, in a different country where people were just going in and looting and taking whatever and snatching things out of other people's baskets and, and doing, doing just crazy things that you would imagine. Like, why would someone do that? And it pains me to, to admit, but I wonder how many of those people also sit in church on Sunday morning or, or Wednesday nights or call themselves Christians and they're loading up their shopping carts with 75 million rolls of toilet paper, right? And so 
I think as Christians, especially students, we need to understand that we need to live our life as, as Christ showed us in His example. But I think Paul also gives us a great reminder. And that is don't just think about yourself, but take interest in others. If you look at Philippians chapter 2, two verses, 3 and 4, we see that he says, Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourself. Let each of you look not only to his own interest, but also to the interest of others. We see Christ's example, but now we also see Paul's reminder. Live an after you life by placing others' interest in front of your own. Does that mean you're not allowed to buy toilet paper in the quarantine? No. Does that mean you're not allowed to, to buy all milk and, and eggs and, and the necessities you need? No. But what it simply means is don't take more than you need. Don't take more than you need forcing other people to not have anything. So I want to give you some do's and, and don'ts that, that we see in these two verses from Paul's reminder. And the first thing we see is we see some, some don'ts, some do not. And I think this is simple and it's kind of repeating uh, myself, but, but I want you to understand. What you, what you don't need to do, don't be selfish, right? Right? And don't focus only on your own interest. I think this is a great time that we're living in for you to, to prove and show people that you live a selfless life. Don't be selfish. Don't, don't, don't focus so much on your own interest. And so, on the flip side of that, what does it do? Be selfless. Don't be selfish. Be selfless. And then focus on the interest and the needs of others. Through Christ's example and Paul's instruction, we see that it's not enough to simply not be selfish, but we must also be selfless. And I know you're listening to this and you're thinking, okay, you keep repeating yourself. We get the point. We're horrible people. We're selfish people. We're, we're awful teenagers. We just want, 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 and don't ever want to serve, serve, serve. And you're like, uh, tell me how. Tell me how. And so point number three, living selflessly. Living selflessly. Serving others and living selflessly honestly isn't always easy and it's not always appealing. Uh, I, I think the main reasons that it's not easy and it's not appealing is because it's very uncomfortable. We like to be comfortable. I like for the temperature to be a certain certain degree, you know, in my house. I like for uh, for things to be how I, want. I like to have the snacks that I want in the refrigerator or whatever. I like for my life to, to be smooth. And it goes the same way with driving down the road. I like to drive in the lane that's smooth, the one that's more comfortable. And so you have to understand that I get you. I get it that it's not easy. I get it that sometimes you don't want to. But we have to remember what Jesus went through on our behalf. And then we also have to remember what Paul is reminding us to how to live our life. It's not about whether or not you're comfortable. It's about whether or not you're making a difference. You know, when God calls people, He doesn't call people to be comfortable. He doesn't call people uh, to, to just have a great, easy life, right? If that was the case, then we wouldn't be under quarantine in my first month as a new student pastor here at Central Baptist Church. If that was the case... Serving others isn't always easy or appealing, but it's a calling. It is a command that, that we're giving, that we're given from, from Christ and from God and how we are to operate. So now that Jesus has showed us and Paul has reminded us to live selflessly, you, you, you're sitting there and you're hearing this and you're asking the question, okay, Randall, we get you, we got your point, we're, we're going to do this, but how? How do I notice the needs of others? And it's super simple. And it's three words. And the first word, and the first way that you notice the needs of others is you look. You look. You look up from what's distracting you. Maybe it's your phone. Maybe it's yourself. Maybe it's your pride. Maybe it's your worry. You know, I'm surprised Teenagers don't fall in ditches or, or, or fall into the street or, or just run into brick walls more than, than they, they do uh, because the majority of them are walking around like this. 
And so maybe it's your phone. Maybe you need to put your phone down and you need to look up and you need to see what's going on around you. Maybe it's yourself. Maybe you can't see the needs of other people because all you see is yourself and all you're worried about is yourself. Maybe it's your pride. Maybe you don't want people to think that you associate with the lowly. Maybe you don't want your friends to think, oh, why is he hanging out with that group of people? Or why is she sitting at that lunch table? Or why are you talking to them? They don't live the same life that we live. Or maybe it's a worry. Maybe you're afraid to look up because you feel like you're not good enough. The truth of, of the gospel and the truth of making disciples is that Christ and, and, and God is going to equip those who He calls and so you're never not going to be not good enough. I know that's a crazy run-on sentence, or however I worded that. But God is always going to make you good enough to share His love and His compassion with others. He always will. So don't let your phone, don't let yourself, don't let your, your pride or your worry of not being good enough cause you to never look up. Pick up your head and look up. And the reason that's so simple and the reason I'm challenging you with that is because we, we forget it. Because we get so wrapped up into what's going on. When, when you're looking down, chances are you're looking at yourself. When you're looking up, you're looking at other people. Number two, discover. Number two, discover. Once you see somebody that has a need, get to know them. Ask them how they're doing. And actually listen to them. Ask them how, how their life is going. And don't just brush it off like a, hey, how are you? I'm good. Sweet, thanks. See you later. And then just like check it off in your Jesus mark, book, check, whatever. Okay? That's not how this works. We're, we're called to be intentional. Don't just look up, but discover needs. Dig deeper than just your basic conversations and what you see on the surface. On the surface, everybody's going to try to play it cool. But discover their needs, and it requires you putting in the work of truly getting to know who they are. And that means being persistent. That means being available. That means being there, right? And so discover their needs. And you're probably going to get on their nerves. And that's okay. But don't give up because you feel like a casual conversation was good enough. Get to know somebody on a deeper level and get to know their needs and discover what's going on. So first we look up. Second, we discover. We're intentional. And then lastly, this is, this is super difficult. And so I hope you're listening. I hope you're ready. This is, this is going to blow your mind. How do we live selflessly? Number three, we do. It's easy. You simply just do. Once you see them, once you discover their needs meet their needs. It's simple. If they're hungry, guess what we're going to give them? Clothes. No, we're going to give them food, right? If they're thirsty, we're going to give them a drink. If they need a place to stay, if they need shelter, we're going to give them a place to stay. If they need a friend, even though it may be uncomfortable for you, be their friend. If they need Jesus, Point them to Jesus. So look up, discover, and students, just do it. Just do it. Just, just go and be who it is that Christ is calling you to be in living a selfless life. And it starts with noticing the needs of those around us. So how does that work in the quarantine? How does that work right now in 2020? How does that work in my schools, in my home? Meet the needs of people. Pick up your phones and call somebody. Check on them. Meet the needs of your family, those who are in the same house of you. Meet the needs of, of those around you and do things for your parents. Do things for your siblings. Be the hands and feet of Jesus. Look, discover, and just meet their needs. So I want to leave you with one thing. This is what I call your take home every week. I give you this last statement. And if you don't remember anything else that I've said, I want you to never forget this one statement. Look, 
discover, and do something to live like Jesus and meet others' needs. Look, discover, and do something to live like Jesus and meet others' needs. So let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you. And God, we just thank you so much for who you are. And God, I just pray as, as we study what it means to live a selfless life and what it means to notice others' needs, Lord, that you'll put a desire in our hearts to just be less focused on ourselves and more focused on those around us. God, I pray that you give us the strength to be bold. Lord, I pray that you give us the desire to serve. And God, even in this crazy time, Lord, that we won't so focus on, on, on our own interest, but Lord, we'll focus on the interest of others. And Lord, we thank you for your perfect example in Jesus and how he lived his life. And Lord, we pray that we can imitate that uh, the best we can. Lord, thank you so much for, for Jesus who gave his life on the cross for our sins, who lived the ultimate selfless life uh, for, for everyone. And Father, we just love you. And God, we just ask that you be with us. And uh, Lord, just be with those through this time of quarantine. And we thank you. In Christ's name we pray. Amen.